Pastor Rick has entitled his sermon, Image Bearers. And it comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. Shall we stand for the reading of the word? Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you at this time, we ask that you put a special blessing on Pastor Rick, that he uh, preaches your word straight and true, and also you, that you touch each one of us, that we may get something from this lesson and that we open our hearts and minds. We ask this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> we're going to continue with our series of the Sojourner's Journey. We're, uh, we've been spending the last three Sundays talking about maybe, uh, I don't know about controversial, but definitely um, some topics uh, that are debatable um, even in churches. And we're trying to come up with ways that we can approach these um, problems, these uh, topics um, scripturally, but also um, with an application to our own lives. I'm telling you, today we're going to get pretty explicit, so uh, if it's too much for you, you know, uh, plug your ears or something. I don't know. Um, but this is a definitely a, an adult subject. So, uh, the la like I said, the last three Sundays, we've, we've taken three principles that we established um, and we're trying to apply them to, uh, and like Les and I uh, have been talking, contemporary issues. Well, contemporary just means today. I mean, uh, these are issues that have been around for a long time, um, but um, they are things that are hotly contested, I suppose we could say, um, especially nowadays. We have three principles that we've been we've been trying to apply, or to at least have in the back of our minds as we approach these subjects. The first is there is a spiritual war out there. There is the 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 carnal and the spiritual will always be at war with each other. Always. Now, <clears throat> for the Christian, that the answer well for everybody the answer is Jesus Christ. But once we settle on that answer of Jesus Christ, at least we have a way to battle instead of just being put to slaves to the, to the carnality of these um, philosophies. And then we also had this principle that there is a prime directive for every Christian. And that prime directive is love. <clears throat> so these three principles, we have taken and given them, uh, boiled them down to two questions. And those two questions we've approached every subject with. What does God's word say? And how do I approach people in love? Now, we've talked about gender identity. We've talked about critical race theory. We've talked last week about the definition, definition of marriage. This week, I want us to talk about abortion. And there's lots of definitions for abortion out there, but the one I want us to concentrate on, what I'm talking about today is the deliberate termination of a human pregnancy. That's what I want us to talk about today. All right? And I want us to take these three, keep these three principles in mind, and I want us to look at these two questions 
in regards to this topic. So what does God's word have to say about the topic, the issue of abortion, the deliberate termination of a human pregnancy? <clears throat> Pink opened up with Genesis 1.26. I want to remind us. Genesis 1.26, God says, let us make man in our own image. So in your bulletin, in our image, after our likeness, or um, here it says, to be like us. The first thing that we need to understand, we as humans... Bear the image of God. All of us. Bear the image of God. We are different from the animals. Yes, both animals and man was formed from the dust of the earth. But man had the breath of God breathed into them. We are different. We bear the image of God among in our humanity it's something that is that we have as a legacy that we pass on to generation to generation to generation we bear the image of god that's an important concept it has a lot of application to it 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 has important applications in the Ten Commandments, it has important implications in a lot of other topics. But in regards to this, we need to remember that when we're dealing with another human being, that human being is an image bearer of God. That is not to be taken lightly. See, Job 12.10. Job says this. For the life of every living thing is in God's hand and the breath of human uh, and the breath of every human being. See, God holds us in his hand, all of us. It's not for us to decide who stays and who goes. We're image bearers of God. I'm hoping this is like you're, you're, you're doing some yeah buts, okay? Uh, this isn't a, a Bible study, but I'm hoping this gives you some yeah buts because we're talking specifically how this scriptures, these scriptures deal with abortion, all right? I'm hoping, I'm hoping you start thinking about other things, right? I can, I can only cover so much every Sunday. But I want you to know that Job, in the scriptures, God-breathed scripture says, for the life of every living thing is in God's hand and the breath of every human being. All right? In fact, it's so important to God, <coughs> this life of every living thing and the breath of every human being, it's so important to God that he loved it so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's how important it was, this life is of God, it, to God, that he would send his only son to redeem it back and provide it uh, um, life again. That, that's how important. In, in 1 John 4.10, uh, uh, Paul, John says again, he reinforces John 3.16, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a propitiation, as a, a substitutionary sacrifice. He gave up his own son for us. That's how important human life is. 
image bearers of God. That's how important it is to God. He would sacrifice his only son. We should never, never take any life as any less valuable than that. Oh, I could go so many places, but I got to stay focused. All right? Every life is, every human life is, is an uh, image bearer of God. And that life is important, so important that God would send his son to redeem it. Okay? So important that every life is in his hand and the breath of every human being. Second, Psalm 139. Psalm 139, 13 says, <clears throat> the psalmist David writing uh, this psalm to God, he says, you made all the in delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumbered the grains of the sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. In my mother's womb. Life begins before physical birth. At conception, everything necessary for becoming a human is present. All we need is time. You can see David realizing that God's thoughts about him were precious and could not be numbered. That's, that's every one of you sitting in these pews. Do you realize God's thoughts about you cannot be numbered? From, from before you were born, God knew you, valued you, and was thinking about you. It's true for every pregnancy. It's true. <laughs> Job, again. Job 31, 15 says this. Job says, <clears throat> For God created both me and my servants. He created us both in the womb. Jeremiah 1, 5. Bless Jill's heart. Didn't she do great today? Reading Jeremiah. That was your pre-read this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Jeremiah 1, verse 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as prophet to the nations. For Jeremiah, God knew him before he was born, and even before he formed him in his mother's womb. Now, before, but the forming happened in his mother's womb. I mean, Mr. and Mrs. Jeremiah's dad and mom had something to do with it. 
but was in that womb where he was formed. That's why when we look at 1 Corinthians 13, 12, the great love chapter, and it ends with this idea, now I know in part, but one day I'll know as I am known. Even Jeremiah, this great prophet of God, who had this word of God given to him, a young man sent out to speak for God. Even he, even he, as much as he's known, as close as he was to God, God knew him before he was even formed in his mother's womb, and one day he'll know himself like that. But you know what? So will you. You will know as you are known. God has known you from the foundations of this world. That's an important concept when we start dealing with pregnancies. And the last thing I want us to look at is Psalm 127.3. Where am I going? Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. We should know that children are a gift from the Lord. They, they, some Bibles say, a heritage. Children should be looked upon as a blessing, not a curse. Oh no, we're pregnant. I mean, I, I've rarely met a. Uh, a married couple or a couple who've got pregnant, that it was the perfect timing. You know what? <laughs> I don't have enough money. We don't. We aren't in the right time of life. It, it is what it is. But it's never. It's never a curse. Okay. So, scripture. Every human is an image bearer of God. And humanity doesn't require birth. We are formed in our mother's wombs. And that's a gift from God. Okay? So, how do I approach people in love? What is our prime directive? Love. That is our first and foremost command. But we've said that love without truth is hypocrisy. You can't really love somebody and not tell them the truth. You've got to tell them the truth. But truth without love is brutality. You aren't supposed to take the truth and beat them over the head with it. It's brutal. So you have two stars in your bulletin. Hypocrisy, brutality. Be careful of both when dealing with the prime directive. All right? So now here comes our truth is statements. There's not enough room for you all to write these all in there. Sit back and listen. Or uh, you can review them on, online. The truth is, ha, Romans 1, 16 and 17. You know what the truth of the matter is in regards to this issue of abortion? That the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone. 
The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone. It's the power of God unto salvation for women that have had abortions, for doctors who have performed abortions, for clinicians that have encouraged abortions. The gospel is the power to forgive, redeem, and change everyone. That's the truth. That's the truth. We start with it every Sunday. Truth is, society has confused, deceived, legalized so many, so this issue so much, they, they've confused and deceived so many that people are in all different situations and in all different beliefs regarding this issue. You need to realize that when you're dealing with people in regards to this issue. The, the spiritual war that's out there has got people sitting in pews and people out and out that out and out just say they don't believe in God. They, they've got a whole range of beliefs on this issue. You, you need to be ready to come and settle it with yourself and then understand that not everybody is you. Right? You need to approach them in love, tell them the truth, and make sure that truth has been presented in love. Okay? Truth is, sexual intercourse makes babies. I, I know. You know who taught me that? Sharon Flomer. <laughs> Sitting right there in the science room at the old school. Sexual intercourse makes babies. If you don't want the responsibility of being a parent, don't have sex. Oh, that's unreal. It's unrealistic? It's not. If you choose to engage in that activity, there's always a possibility of a life being formed. Be ready for that responsibility. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for the all the rest that goes along with sex, the two becoming one flesh, the emotional attachment and the spiritual implications of that is great. But there's also always the possibility of a life being formed. Oh, no, no, we're using birth. There's always the possibility of a life being formed. Oh, I'm on the... There's always the possibility of a life being formed. And that's the truth. Truth is, babies are babies at conception, and they are a gift, a blessing, not a curse, nor inconvenience, nor a future destroyer. Oh, it's going to destroy my future nor an, over, uh, an overbearing financial burden. They're a gift. That's the truth. Will it be hard? Could be. Truth is, it takes two people to create a life. Now, you can give me all the yeah buts, but that's not for this sermon. I know there are other ways that people have children besides two people coming together and having sex. However, for the 99% of babies born, it takes two people to create a life. So both are equally responsible for that life and should be held to that responsibility. That's what we should stand up for. Both. 
not just the mother that's carrying the baby, the father that was responsible to, should be responsible to. That's the truth. And that's what we say here. So, the truth is, we, as this church, must be ready to meet needs then. When we share this truth, we better be ready to give time. We better be able to give a commitment. We better even be able to adopt. We might even need to financially support people in this situation. Bring couples together and help them raise this family that's theirs. We can't do it. Be ready to adopt. You guys, we can stand up here and say it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. But when they don't see any other way out and it's being offered on every corner, why wouldn't they? We have to be the other option. Do you understand what I'm saying? And just saying, no, it's wrong. Don't do it. We got to stand up and say, we're here to help you. What do you need from us? That's, listen, that's what we're going to do here. Now, we're doing it vicariously through CareNet, but, but we can't stop there. Giving money to CareNet to do it for us is silly. We, we've got to saddle up. We've got to be ready as it, this church to be ready to help specifically if we're going to take this stance. So, what can we conclude? The same as we have every Sunday. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21 says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, Come back to God. Come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. That's our message. Come back to God. Now, are there practical things we need to do for these people? Yep. And if you are willing to do that, you need to let our elders and deacons know. Do you all understand what I just said? Because we can stand up here and you can all nod your heads in the pews. Yeah, yeah, way to go, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, that's a good sermon. But unless you're ready to step up and give real help, this sermon is just a head nodding sermon. We need to tell Karenette what we are willing to do. You need to let me know. You need to let our elders know so we can literally have concrete ways to help this issue. Not just talk about it, really do it. Amen? All right. So I'm going to ask our singers to come. And you all, I'm going to ask you to turn in your hymnal it's really a chorus <laughs> that our hymnal has printed. Hymn 197, Majesty. And uh, um, this, is, this is the last um, topic we're going to talk about. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that as um, we leave this um, topic, that you've, you've been trained in some tools to apply to other topics that you have come across. All right. So, number one, uh, 197 in your hymnal, uh, Majesty.
majesty. Worship his majesty. Um, I pray that we live as light um, in a dark world, that um, we they can see the majesty of the truth that Jesus came and died for us in our lives, and that we can approach people in love. The world needs to have the answer, and the answer is Jesus Christ. And we have to do it in love, not just saying, you're wrong for doing this, but I'm here to help you through this. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. But also, Lord, thank you for your spirit. Because, Lord, we know that you are love. And if we have the spirit of God in us, then we will love one another. So, Lord, help us to speak the truth. We have to speak the truth. We cannot be hypocrites and hide the truth in order to protect people's, I don't know, feelings or um, make them comfortable. But Lord, we also cannot um, take joy in confronting people with truth and then not love them. So Lord, help us to find the balance and help us to be people who are known for their love in and speaking the truth in love. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.